territorial claims to all of Germany and to Lithuania too? Yes, Poland has a secret path and I'll gladly follow it today, maybe a bit too far. Hello imperialists, Lucas here. The king of Poland is dead, unfortunately drowned in a river wearing full armor, which didn't end well for him. So I'll take advantage of this moment and set Poland on a path that will be hard to turn back from. I'll incite orthodox rebellions to change the religion in my country and to hinder this process I won't pay missionaries. I've even angered the local population because the Ruthenian culture became unacceptable. Yes, I've really angered everyone. Internationally, my rivals are Hungary, the Teutonic Order, and possibly soon Austria. I've sent one diplomat to Hungary to prove that Slovakia is a former Polish territory. I've also formed a strategic alliance with the Czechs. It's fortunate that the Czechs aren't fond of Austria. They'll serve as a buffer for me. I'm granting privileges to the estates for points, cheaper advisors, except for the nobility. The third and final privilege for the nobility is supremacy over the crown. Then I'll distribute these two privileges as well. I've also revoked Poland's guarantee of Moldavia's independence. I'll deal with the magnate situation much later. First, I'll address the issue of Poland's western neighbor. The Holy Roman Empire cannot last long. Shortly after, I'll make Austria my Polish rival. Regarding the succession of Władysław III, I won't place a politically strong Czagielon on the throne. I'll settle for a local puppet. Unfortunately, this strained Polish-Lithuanian relations, which saddened me. Mutual dislike among some electors means my diplomacy will have to work harder to convince all electors to be Polish allies. To accelerate the spread of orthodoxy, I have attacked the Moldavian domain first. The war was short and effective. The number of orthodox residents in Poland is increasing. I've also allied with Burgundy, although I forgot about it. After a few years, I managed to secure alliances with all the electors of the Holy Roman Empire. This allowed me to declare war on the Habsburg Emperor without hesitation. Initially, my army struck Vienna. Meanwhile, the Czechs fulfilled their role as a buffer. Vienna surrendered quickly, exposing Austria's weakness as an emperor and the empire itself, allowing me to dissolve it. Then the Polish army had to engage in several minor battles, thoroughly destroying the Austrian army. Then I ordered my diplomats to dissolve all unnecessary alliances. After the Empire's fall, it was time to deal with the aftermath of the Battle of Varna. I personally want territorial claims. However, if I broke the alliance with the Czechs, I could have the opportunity to form a union over their country. Dissolving the Empire and the lack of a union with Lithuania lead us to Poland's secret path. But to advance claims to all of Germany, I must become an empire. Yes, fun things await me. I conclude wars with Austria by only taking war reparations. That's because I've angered the Orthodox population a bit too much. Ultimately, though, I had to provoke them into rebellion. It simply makes them stronger. I also ensured that Polish fortresses were abandoned. I'll specialize Poland in all shady espionage actions, bribery, and wiretapping. However, the next ideas will be very unconventional. I'll show you later. Quite soon, with the fall of Krakow, I introduce Orthodox religion in Poland. And thanks to cunning manipulations, not only did I profit, but I also regained 10% of the crown land. And in a moment, in 1460, a major uprising of the Gdansk bourgeoisie broke out, which Poland decided to support. The order armies were quickly defeated. They literally have nothing left. The territories were then divided. Unfortunately, the order only managed to call Riga for help. Thus, the order transformed into the Republic of Gdansk, which I subsequently divided in half under treaty agreements. Yes, it's time for the Duchy of Prussia. Since Poland has claims to almost half of Hungary, I decided to exploit the weakness of this country's alliances and attack it. With Burgundy's help, I even managed to break half of the Hungarian army in Czech territory. Unfortunately, the Czechs joined this war as well. <coughs> yes, it was to be expected. The war with Hungary concluded with the acquisition of most of Slovakia and encouraging them to invest in our country. Thanks to Hungarian investments, I introduced the Renaissance to Poland. This war also ended my alliance with the Czechs. Yes, I will miss them. The next step on my path will be to acquire Lithuanian culture for Poland. Unfortunately, this means I must conflict with the Lithuanians. It seems there was a simultaneous attack by me on Lithuania and Moscow on the Livonian order. Fortunately, ending their mutual alliance, the Czechs annexed a significant piece of Hungary. Without much trouble, we shattered the Lithuanian army. The Genoese as well. I managed to convince Lithuania to voluntarily invest in Poland and cede parts of its territory to us. Don't pay attention to those borders. They'll look nicer. I think justifying my wars will be very useful in the age of discovery. These generals drawn for me are very peculiar. After the recent wars, I am quite exhausted, so now I will focus on expanding the Polish economy, which means more taxes from the churches. But ultimately, let the burghers sponsor me. In the meantime, I noticed I could abolish Polish golden liberty, which is quite cool, so I'm doing it right away, because this will resolve many future issues for my country, and I'm instituting a privilege for strong duchies. All of this should facilitate 
further Polish missions. The next ideas I'll develop in Poland will be administrative ones. Hungary lost a war to silly I built churches in Poland, now I'll build workshops, thanks to higher taxes the Polish economy is flourishing. Therefore I'll support it with an even larger 50% tax. When my armies have rested, I sent them to acquire foreign capital from Moscow. The local armies posed no problem. Fortunately, their Russians were eager to invest in Poland. I'm making more investments in churches. I can finally resolve the issue of magnates in Poland, which they may not like. Then I grant and revoke privileges to my merchants, which will enhance the power of mercantilism in Poland up to 100%. I also moved the Polish capital to Vilnius and on that occasion, grateful citizens took to the streets. And shortly after, I gained a personal union over Burgundy, which has grown a bit in the meantime. You could say Germany is surrounded at this point. Now, unfortunately, I must make Krakow a bit freer and a few other provinces until the Lithuanian culture reaches 51%. For a while, unfortunately, Poles will be a minority in my country. It will be a costly process, all to create a better commonwealth, the Lithuanian Polish Commonwealth. But finally, let's restore the proper capital of Poland. An unexpected bonus was that I could once again appoint an orthodox metropolitan. That's one reason I wanted to have the cheapest province, Kuring, among others, but you'll see later. Piotrkov statutes? No, it's time to reclaim Silesia for Poland, and I think not only I attacked the Czechs at this point, the Ottoman Empire did too. Initially, I only seized Silesia and Neumark. I released the Duchy of Brandenburg as my vassal. Also, Nikolaus Copernicus was born, whom I employ and immediately promote. I visit the Lithuanians again and, as I have the opportunity, I conquer properties on the Mediterranean Sea. Podlasi returns to Poland and two new Polish vassals appear. Colonialism emerges in Warsaw. Franco-Ottoman alliance will be a challenge. I also changed the icon we'll celebrate, from development to reducing aggressive expansion. Another invasion of Moscow, and unfortunately, I have received word that Vienna has fallen, this time from the Muscovites. I'll take all of Livonia and encourage them to invest in Poland. Again, I also changed the main trading center to the Baltic. Due to my fear of the Franco-Ottoman alliance, it's time to attack France. Specifically, that province. I won't attack the Ottoman Empire separately. I'm banking on their forces being unprepared, allowing me to swiftly occupy the entire Balkans, including Constantinople. I'm taking advantage of the moment when the Ottoman Empire's troops are in Persia. I'm hoping Burgundy will hold off France. I seized Constantinople and raised it. You know, tradition. I even achieved my first victory. Now, I'll dispatch my army across the Balkans to occupy them. The war with the Ottoman Empire went better than planned. Unfortunately, I'm facing some challenges in France. Plus, there are numerous mountain forts to conquer here. However, I managed to catch part of France's allied armies and defeat them. Luck was on my side. France got embroiled in another conflict. Geneva chose this moment to fight for independence against Savoy. I'm deeply sorry for this. Since the Ottoman Empire is thoroughly infiltrated, I've received intel that they plan to attack the Mamluk Sultanate. Although the Sultanate refuses an alliance with me, I guaranteed its independence. I briefly wondered where the French armies were, then glanced at Spain. To my surprise, the Empire attacked the Sultanate, but I'll proceed with France's partition first. I must implement conscription and reduce taxes in Poland. I concluded the war with France, gained substantial wealth and acquired several crucial provinces from which I'll release vassals later. Constantinople is once again under my control. News of the Protestant Reformation has reached me. I've chosen the influence idea as Poland's next endeavor. You should already have an inkling of my strategy with Poland. The number of my vassals didn't give away anything. The Ottoman armies have become significant. I can't win any battles against them. All right, I won once under Constantinople. But that's probably the extent of my victories. What losses? Fortunately, I'm a wealthy nation and can afford plenty of mercenaries for these wars. I feel cheated. Oh, well, I'll make up for it in Lithuania. Oh, the Sultanate did hand over one province after all. Mamluks acted fairly here. As the Reformation era approaches, it's time for Poland's golden age, as it allows me to swiftly resolve this idea, especially since my first vassals are ready for integration. I'll accumulate splendor rapidly in the Reformation era. A combination of espionage and reclaiming provinces for my vassals means I'm gaining minimal aggressive expansion. Another invasion of Moscow to secure foreign capital. When will Russia rise? In the second war with France, I'll liberate numerous territories for my vassals. France nonetheless avoids direct conflict with me. I won't conquer some German duchies. I'll convince them to become Poland's vassals instead. A significant chunk of France and 20 aggressive 
expansion. The partitions of France are proceeding smoothly. I'll temporarily turn Provence into my march as I won't incur annexation penalties and Provence is essentially free Naples. In Poland there's a huge expansion of manufactories. First on the list are cloth, iron, copper and cows. Lots of cows. Since the Ottoman Empire is two technologies behind me, I'll gain more capital from them. They are quite backward compared to me. Maybe I'll also conquer Hungary for myself. I'll take advantage of the fact that the Ottoman forces are in Egypt, unfortunately. This time, I'm destroying the Ottoman army. As I can now achieve imperial rank, it means I can already carry out my mission. The description of this mission surprises me. The Holy Roman Empire is a troublesome political entity, but also a prestigious one, and it harbors opportunities to further promote our country above our peers if we can secure a good relationship with the emperor. My question is, which emperor? The empire doesn't exist, but fortunately, I still get claims and all this will be mine someday. Turco-Polish tension, who would have thought? Poland's production is booming, so I'm choosing the Polish crown. I leave the Ottoman Empire with a huge debt after this war, and my conquests were mainly Hungarian territories. Overall, I must admit, I really like the consolidation of the German states, because their conquests should proceed quickly justifying my conquests with religious wars. After all the wars with other neighbors, I've amassed a significant capital for the country's development. And you ask me, how do I build the Polish economy? I simply attract foreign capital all the time. Judiciary is also very important. Low inflation. There's not much left from Lithuania at the moment. Provence has already reached an excellent level, which allows me to pursue its claims in Italy. Maybe I'll form a strategic alliance with Venice for a moment. The wonderful moment of establishing the Commonwealth has arrived. So, there won't be Poland anymore, but it will be, oh my god, what a terrible name. But what's more important is that we need those right ideas, because the LPC ideas are amazing. Look, governing capacity increased by 15%, manpower by 25%, that one's pretty rubbish. But then, discipline, development, production, annexation costs for vassals reduced by 15%, cavalry weaker by 8%, a more stable country and cheaper technology. But more importantly, we retain all Polish missions. So, in theory, we could have a Polish absolute monarchy. The real problem is our culture at the moment because this is our main culture and we have a much greater Polish culture or Belarusian cultures nearby or even German time for new Henrikian articles which will give us a strong monarchy administrator or an extra administrative point this makes integrating such a vassal cost me 156 diplomatic points and I could even reduce that from the parliament well I have to think about whether I'll change the culture again but in the meantime let my war with Naples help me in reclaiming territory for Provence it's going to be a big war I couldn't believe that Spain left that passage open how could I not take advantage of that? Especially since my vassals will handle the rest. And how enjoyable it is to have such a debate in Parliament when I integrate three vassals. Naples under occupation and Spain almost too. But what's more important is that besides reclaiming provinces for Provence, I managed to capture two key monuments for conquest. So let's start waging more wars simultaneously. For now, with smaller duchies, time to restore Polish culture as the main one. I also considered introducing Saxon culture as our main one, to later have the entire acceptable German one when I become an empire. But there are so many trade centers here, it'd be better to turn this whole area into trading companies and make tons of money. I'm becoming an empire. Lack of cultural acceptance essentially means I'll get negatives for things that won't really matter in the trade company. The main drawback is that provinces with German culture will join the Commonwealth more slowly. Besides, I consider Russian and Belarusian cultures acceptable. Lithuanian or Prussian culture will be changed to Polish. This decision will allow me to conquer further territories much faster. I won't suffer as much in terms of manpower. I've finished dealing with Lithuania. I wonder if Burgundy will try to land in Scotland. Well, I didn't exactly want Venice to take that island, unfortunately. I had to transport my army there myself. Burgundy seems to have followed my example. Honestly, I only need a foothold here. Not much remains of France. Oh, how delightful Russia has emerged. Milan has grown significantly here, so I think it's time to attack and temper them. That's precisely why I needed this foothold. English forces offer no resistance whatsoever. Having two to three larger vassals truly enhances gameplay. Since the Ottoman Empire is encroaching on Germany, I need to preemptively secure the borders here. Perhaps now Russia will pose a challenge to our army. Oh, I've raised Moscow, but perhaps decisively not. All right, time to conclude the matter with Germany. I declare one war after another and another. Oh, this is my province after all. I've had quite a few wars in the end, and at this point I'm engaging in some pre 
pretty significant battles, among the biggest I've had in this campaign. Everything is conquered, albeit with unsightly borders, but I'll improve them. I also need to request an additional levy from the same. About 100,000 should suffice. Now it's time for England. My troops are on the island. Unfortunately, Sweden is causing a bit of trouble here. And there goes the English army. I expanded the monument in the Alhambra and in Malta. So it's time to attack the Ottoman Empire because unfortunately it has grown a bit too much. The problem with the Ottoman Empire is that if you don't crush it early on, it spreads quite aggressively later. I have redirected all my trade to Lubeck, especially from my trading companies. Yes, I added everything because I didn't feel like clicking, but now it's time for a little war. Well, it won't be exactly small. One button and a hundred more gold income. 30 more gold. I feel like it used to distribute those routes automatically better. The Ottoman troops don't stand much chance against us. Really, another event. But that's the outcome of the battle. Constantinople fell very quickly. I won those battles mainly thanks to strong generals. Wow, we totally destroyed the Ottoman army. Not surprising, given their hopeless composition, Dutch revolt. Oh, wonderful. During the war with the Ottoman Empire. And great, a revolt. The end of the Dutch revolt because a new country emerged. Play as the Netherlands. I think not. I feel like I'm being attacked from all sides. After some tough battles, I finally occupy most of the Balkans. The Netherlands are also under my temporary rule. They'll return to their homeland, I promise. From Russia this time, however, I'm only taking money. Surprising! I mean, I'm encouraging them to invest, you know? I'm restoring the Netherlands to Poland. The war with the Ottoman Empire was bloody, but mainly for them. Really, Cossacks, really. In all my 93 provinces, I'm quite curious about this. I should be able to play with something like that someday. Well, I guess I'll have to quell these rebellions after all. Finally, global trade has arrived in my lands. Not surprising, the richest province, the richest trade node, I must admit. I have a really good queen. Production, she's also a scholar. Although she got the scholar from that mission to build a university in Krakow. Oh, and for I don't know how many times, I'm attacking the Ottoman Empire again. This time, I'll be taking their Austrian holdings. And I think, mom, I messed up Russia. I don't even need to make claims anymore. I just trapped the entire Ottoman army because I cut them off with forts. I have a fort here, and it turns out I was right, because look where their entire army retreats, and it's a stack wipe, 100,000 troops. Wait, do I get five points of government reform for a university? I build them everywhere, it's too OP. That moment when an event happens, and you know you overpaid for Burgundy. After integrating Burgundy, I should tidy up those forts, but I really can't be bothered. But our country is starting to look better. The age of absolutism, so it's time to get rid of all privileges. I'll also trick the particularists by accepting their demands and then reducing autonomy everywhere. I'll have a lot of rebellions to deal with soon. Click, click, click. Oh, 30 absolutism, always a good start. I did something weird to England, but that's so I can collect a lot of money in the English channel. I'll use the numerous rebellions to further enhance absolutism, only where it's cheapest. Almost 50 now. First expansion in the age of absolutism, and I pick cheaper suppression of minorities. Now, keeping our citizens content is much more affordable. Thanks to this, I quickly reached 60 absolutism. After increasing stability, to the third level, I can implement better absolute rule in Poland, the Polish autocratic monarchy. It would be beneficial to trigger the court and country disaster, as it's one of the most potent disasters for gaining free absolutism. Oh no, it's growing! And the best part, I can restore parliament in Poland, unless you don't want to. I'm very curious about how to sign the constitution of 1627, when the age of enlightenment is in 1712. At the earliest, I am the state, and you all serve me. Yes, a disaster has begun, unfortunately lasting for 10 years. I'm now deploying a mercenary army to automatically quell rebellions because without many vassals, someone needs to handle these uprisings. I just can't be bothered. Meanwhile, I've completed developing more ideas. Wait, 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 wait. Introducing the absolute monarchy has somewhat deprived me of estates. I didn't notice this before. How on earth did Portugal release Morocco during the war? I want to finish the court and country disaster with over 65 absolutism points because then we'll increase its maximum by 20. I'm absorbing the European part of Portugal or at least the continent continental part because I don't want the islands. And now Brazil has emerged. Frankly, I totally forgot about that. Oops, I've literally conquered the entire Iberian Peninsula. Simultaneously, I'm commencing the annexation process of my last powerful vassals, although I'm doing so with great reluctance. And I've solidified my absolute monarchy, plus 20 absolutism. Civil war in England. I wonder if they'll get that overpowered government. The Commonwealth has also become an economic hegemon. Military hegemony would be better, but it's harder to achieve because it requires a million soldiers. Lately, I'm not doing so well with that. Maybe someday I'll lose some war and reach military hegemony before completing that mission. It seems Great Britain is faring poorly. In the next war, the Ottoman Empire doesn't stay
stand much of a chance against us. We have a slight numerical advantage. Well, we are three times their size. Hmm, what happened in Great Britain? They still have a king. What did that Ottoman fleet do to me? This is really bad. I have 442 universities. Admittedly, I haven't built them all yet because I'm still missing a few. But I think I'll complete that mission now. And I received 2,500. I believe it's the first time I've enacted all reforms in this game for a while. Currently, all my government reforms look as you see on the screen. And I'm allocating the rest of the points to increase my governing as it's very cost effective. I've finally passed through the strait. I think I need to create a passage here in this war. I'll test something on the Ottoman Empire here. I make peace with them, releasing Egypt as my vassal. I'm also making them my march right away. In this province, I acquired a monument that reduces my stability costs. Here, I'll switch to Machiavellianism at the ninth level of reform and combined with diplomatic ideas by declaring war on the Ottoman Empire, I'll only lose three stability points, but that's later. Let the newly conquered provinces submit first. Here's another monument that will soon reduce my stability costs. I also got one from religion. How nice. Of course, I'm hiring an advisor and I'm starting another war with the Ottoman Empire and I've lost even fewer points, just two. And now raising stability to plus one costs me 10 points. Wow. The first war with the Ottomans from which I created a very powerful Egypt. However, I won't honor the peace treaty. I'll make up for it with minimal stability point costs in my country. The Ottoman Empire is in such a poor state that even Persia is attacking them. In the meantime, I'll build regiments camps all over Egypt to boost my army here. Second war, confirmed info. Once you have Egypt, you can build the Suez Canal for them. Third war, and the Balkans are ours. I've lost count of which war this is, and another war. But honestly, after conquering Anatolia, the Ottomans are at most two wars away, and I'm already so powerful. A bit later, even more potent. I haven't had this much fun conquering in a long time, like with the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. And if you want to learn how to conquer like this in Europa, Universalis 4, I recommend this beginner's guide. It's a good starting point. 